a lot of people are going to be watching the markets tomorrow mm -hmm. as we see what's happened after this drone attack, uh, drone strikes on the world's largest oil plant in Saudi Arabia yesterday. Houthi rebels claiming responsibility for that attack this morning. And the White House is not buying that. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says Iran is behind the attacks. He hasn't offered any proof of that just yet. Yesterday, Pompeo tweeted this. Tehran is behind nearly 100 attacks on Saudi Arabia while Rouhani and Zarif pretend to engage in diplomacy. Iran has now launched an unprecedented attack on the world's energy supply. There's no evidence the attacks came from Yemen. Now, exactly who is responsible, that's unclear. A U.S. source with knowledge of the incident tells CNN that there are signs the attacks came from inside Iraq. And the Wall Street Journal says officials are investigating if cruise missiles were fired from southern Iraq, not Yemen, although no evidence to back either claim has emerged. Saudi Arabia is the world's largest oil exporter. This knocked out half of its oil capacity, which equates to 5% of the daily world supply. And that means we could see a spike in gas prices. We want to sort all of this out with you here. Uh, CNN senior international correspondent Nick Payton Walsh with us, as well as CNN White House reporter Sarah Westwood. Um, so let's start at the White House here, Sarah. Has the president responded to Secretary Pompeo's tweet yet? Because there are some lawmakers who are clearly not happy about it. That's right, Victor and Christy. And yesterday, President Trump spoke with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. And in a statement, the White House said the U.S. strongly condemns the attack on the Saudi oil supplies and also said that the U.S. remains committed to ensuring global oil markets are stable and well supplied. Energy Secretary Rick Perry also briefed on the incident, said that the U.S. stands ready to use its petroleum reserves to offset any disruptions to the oil markets. Obviously, this could be a major disruption. And Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in that tweet also said that we call on all nations to publicly and unequivocally condemn Iran's attacks and said that the United States will work with our partners and allies to ensure that energy markets remain well supplied and Iran is held accountable. Now, there's been a mixed reaction from lawmakers about the Trump administration's quickness to point the finger at Iran. Democratic Senator Chris Murphy, for example, calling this a simplification, writing yesterday, this is such irresponsible simplification, and it's how we get into dumb wars of choice. The Saudis and Houthis are at war. The Saudis attack the Houthis and the Houthis attack back. Iran is backing the Houthis and has been a backer, but that's not just as simple as equating the Houthis with Iran. But the U.S. is also getting some support from allies of the president, including Republican Senator Tom Cotton, who encouraged the administration to take a hard line against Iran. Of course, the U.S. has been ramping up pressure against Iran, but it remains to be seen what options the president has left. The U.S., Victor and Christie, has already imposed a crippling sanctions regime against Tehran. All right, uh, Nick, I want to go to you next in Tehran there. How is Iran reacting to this? I mean, you have to bear in mind the seriousness of the allegation here, certainly leveled by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. He's essentially saying that Iran was behind a major attack on Saudi Arabia's oil infrastructure. That could massively escalate already fraught tensions here in the region. Iran has come straight out this morning and denied it. Its senior diplomat, Mike Pompeo's counterpart, Javid Zarif, saying on Twitter, having failed at, quote, max pressure, Secretary Pompeo is turning to, quote, max deceit. Uh, referring to maximum pressure being the policy the U.S. has been maintaining against Iran since it got out of the nuclear deal hatched by Barack Obama and began reinstalling sanctions. Zarif goes on to say the U.S. and its clients are stuck in Yemen because of the illusion that weapon superiority will lead to military victory. He's referring to how Saudi Arabia, a U.S. ally and a government in Yemen is fighting the Yemeni Houthi rebels who are accused of launching these drone strikes and accept themselves. They say they took responsibility for launching these 10 drones that they they say carried out the attack. He goes on to say, blaming Iran won't end disaster, accepting our May, uh, April 2015 proposal to end the war and begin talks May. He's referring again to the nuclear deal there. Iran's been saying, look, let's get back to talking, but you have to ease sanctions against Iran first. I've got to point out to you the technicalities of this, uh, these allegations here now. It is a startlingly dangerous moment. We're out here in the Middle East, certainly. Saudi Arabia and Iran, long-term adversaries here who've been sparring over the past years. 
or so. The doubt really is who will be capable of carrying out attacks as sophisticated as this. Now some say we're talking about relatively minor sophistication in terms of the drones, that the Houthi rebels in Yemen are capable of launching something like this. They've got better at technology over time and may have been able to pull something like this off. Even though it requires flying through a lot of Saudi Arabia to get to these oil facilities, others are saying, well, actually, the finger points more logically towards somewhere like southern Iraq, where Iran, even the Houthis, potentially have allies and influence too. That may be where it comes from. The point is, there's no evidence for the claims at this point. And so Mike Pompeo, I think, will be under increasing pressure to back up his allegation that Iran is somehow responsible for this. Back to you. Nick Payton Walsh, Sarah Westwood, we appreciate you both so much. Thank you. So listen, it's important to reinforce severity and scale here. Saudi Arabia is the number one oil exporter in the world. And this is the largest oil processing plant, not only in the country, but in the world as well. And in the discussion of scale, experts say this is in a different league. Uh, we also know that the attacks have crippled the Saudi oil production, knocking out 5.7 million barrels of oil a day from the supply chain. That's roughly 60% of the kingdom's daily output. As global markets open on Monday, I expect to see a spike in oil and gas prices. So the geopolitical fallout from this is what could be significant as well. Former Ambassador Gary Grappo uh, is with us now. Ambassador, thank you so much for being with us. You served in Saudi Arabia for years. I understand you were there recently. Is this something, what we've seen here the past 16 hours, uh, that was of a, a real dire concern to you and the people there? I don't think there's any question on the seriousness of these attacks and what they mean. Uh, we've seen this conflict now go from what was a regional conflict confined to the southwestern uh, part of the Arabian Peninsula to now a conflict that has really global implications, repercussions in fact, with the impact that this is going to have on oil markets, as you said, when they open on, uh, tomorrow. Uh, uh, the only question now is how long are these two facilities going to be offline? The longer they are offline, the greater the impact and the greater the pressure uh, that the global economy is going to be facing. How do you anticipate the kingdom will respond? Uh, I'm sorry, how, uh, how who's going you, to respond? How do you uh, uh, think Saudi Arabia, the kingdom, will respond to this? Oh, I don't think there's any question, given how they've responded to attacks on the kingdom itself in the past, that the Saudis uh, will uh, respond with some sort of reprisal attacks uh, inside Yemen. It's just a question of uh, what targets. Uh, of course, the country has been devastated by previous airstrikes, so there's a real question uh, as to what they could attack. Uh, it's difficult to identify where uh, the Houthi strongholds are. Uh, but secondly, as you alluded to earlier in your report, um, what was the source uh, or the launch point of these attacks? Uh, did it come from Yemen? Was it inside Saudi Arabia? In which case, the uh, Houthis would have had collaborators inside the kingdom. Could it possibly have come from Iraq, which would add a completely new and very dangerous dimension and escalation to the conflict? So if you could sit down with President Trump, would you, would you expect that he engage with, uh, with President Rouhani on this uh, at the UN next week? And if so, what would you, how would you advise the president? Well, if I were advising uh, the president, I would say, look, uh, the maximum pressure campaign that the United States has launched against uh, Iran has had the intended economic impact. But it hasn't changed Iran's behavior. In fact, we've seen that gradually move away from the JCPOA, the nuclear agreement. Moreover, we know that it's still supporting uh, terrorist groups, whether in Yemen, whether uh, in Iraq or elsewhere. And so we need to see a change in behavior in Iran. And that's only going to happen when we find some way to begin talking to the Iranians. And the president is right to uh, extend this invitation to President Rouhani. Uh, and let's start talking and see where we can go with this. But simply maximum pressure without any impact uh, is going to produce the kind of results that we saw yesterday in Saudi Arabia. Mm. All right, Ambassador Gary Grappo, we appreciate you taking the time for us. Mr. Ambassador, thank you. It's a pleasure. Mm -hmm.